Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, Cabbage Head Fanfics, back with amazing fanfiction. This is the series of What If Deku Had Emulating Quirk. Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Izuku Midoriya lay back in his bed with a sigh. Yet another day of ridicule from his super-powered classmates. He was glad that none of them physically attacked him. Well, except for Kakin, but given his quirk, he could do a lot more damage than he actually did, so Izuku was thankful for him to doing that. He was bullied day in day out by basically everyone in his grade because they thought he didn't have a quirk, but Izuku did in fact, have a quirk. The doctors had confirmed that when he was a child, no extra toe joint, and he had a quirk. That's what they had all said. Of course, it would be easier to refute his classmates' claims of his apparent quirklessness if he had any idea of what his quirk was. He had never exhibited any signs of any sort of super ability in his entire life. The doctors had theorized that his quirk probably did something minor or just useless, like being able to sneeze better than everybody else or cooking the perfect egg. But there just wasn't any way to tell. Izuku let out another self-deprecating sigh. It wouldn't do to think about this kind of stuff, it always just made him feel worse. He needed a distraction. There was no hero news for the day. Unusual but not entirely uncommon, of course, it did mean that he had nothing to do for the few hours before and after dinner and until he went to sleep. So instead of his usual, totally cool, pastime of obsessing over heroes and quirks Izuku decided to participate in his second favorite hobby, reading and obsessing over fictional characters in manga and comic books, something that was also totally cool. For one so obsessed with real-life heroes, those in comic books and manga would obviously call to him too. So he quickly pulled out a box of old manga form underneath his bed. He didn't really have any money for anything new and frankly he would like something comforting in a time like this. Naruto was an old favorite of his, a kid that was a failure rising up to be the best of the best through ridicule and adversity. It was brilliant. Three issues later and a hearty curry cooked by his mother, Izuku was getting kind of sleepy. He turned the page and chuckled to himself. Chakra would be an awesome thing to have, everyone in the world having some kind of power. It wouldn't be amiss to say that Izuku had stayed up a little too long, and as such did something he never usually would have done, being so forcefully grounded in reality as he was. With a short laugh he put down the book why not he mumbled to himself, with a sleepy smile and put his hands together in Naruto's signature technique. He lightly imagined pulling the mystical chakra energy into his hands and said, Shadow Clone Jutsu. A poof of smoke appeared next to him and quickly dissipated to reveal an identical clone staring at him in shock. A beat of silence passed between the two Izukas before they started screaming. Ah they shouted simultaneously. Immediately his mother burst into the room, the door bouncing off the wall from the force of her entry. I see you K.U. She shouted desperately. What's W.R.O.N.? But she noticed the second Izuku and fainted. A.H.H.H. The Izuka screamed together again what do we do? They pointed at each other stop copying me. Yes, so you finally found your quirk, Inko Midoriya asked slowly, staring at her son and her son's identical clone. Who they both said, scratching their cheeks nervously. One of them coughed and turned to the other you speak, you're the original. The original Izuku nodded you. Yeah, I guess I finally used it he said. So you can clone yourself? His mother asked. No, Izuku said. He wasn't too sure of it himself. No, Inko mirrored, her eyes flicking between her two identical sons sitting opposite her. Well, yeah, but no. I can clone myself, but that's not what my quirk does. So what does it do? I, uh, I don't know he scratched his cheek again. I was just messing around and then, Izuku trailed off in thought. He had childishly tried a technique from his Naruto manga and it had somehow worked. Maybe, maybe he was secretly a ninja. Wait, no, that was dumb. Apparently his counterpart had the same train of thought and spoke up I we were just playing and then I appeared. I didn't think anything would actually happen. I was just copying Naruto. So what happens now? Is are you going to stay here forever now? Inko asked. The Izikas turned to one another and shrugged. Oh, I know. The clone exclaimed before suddenly jumping up and rushing into the kitchen. What are you the original Izuku started? But before he could get any further, the clone pulled a knife off the rack and jammed it into the back of his hand. Immediately the clone vanished in a poof of smoke and Izuku experienced a burst of familiar memories. Having two sets of memories for the same conversation from two separate perspectives was certainly confusing, but also incredibly awesome. Sorry about that mum that was. Izuku trailed off. His mother had fainted again. Any attempt at replicating the use of his quirk had failed spectacularly. Nothing had worked. No clones, no racing guns, no chakra, no abilities of any kind. At least he hadn't caused his mother to faint again. So, perhaps his abilities weren't routed in chakra, but instead the material? Perhaps, Izuku, quirk obsessor and moderately intelligent middle schooler thought, Perhaps it had to do with the material instead. Could he? Could he mimic fictional abilities? If true, then his quirk would easily be the coolest he had ever seen. 
Izuku quickly wrote down every thought he had about his own quirk in his previously empty personal quirk journal he had first attempted to start when he was about five years old. Of course, that didn't exactly produce any results other than a blank notebook. By that logic, it would be possible for him to use any ability from fiction right, so it would stand to reason that he should attempt to use a different ability, given that his use of chakra hadn't resulted in anything. So, with that thought Izuku quickly flipped through his box of manga and comic books, which would probably be getting some sort of pedestal if this worked and picked out an American favorite, Superman. He opened it to a random page and placed it on his desk. Strength would be too dangerous to test, heat vision spoke for itself, and freeze breath would more likely blow apart part of his wall than actually cool anything down. So that left only one option, the thing that capes were basically invented for. The envy of basically anyone who couldn't do it, the aspiration of any and all humans for millennia. Flight. And so, with much focus Izuku stood on his bed and stared as hard as he could at the open book on his desk. He took in the details of the drawing and how Superman looked in them. He focused on all he knew about the character and any one of the hundreds of storylines that Izuku had consumed from the series. Izuku focused and jumped off his bed. And like any one of the many hundreds of humans in the past that had jumped off things expecting to fly, Izuku fell flat onto his face with a resounding crash. Uki groaned. The sound being muffled by the carpet his face was currently pressed into. Izuku scowled uncharacteristically at the comic book now residing in his hand. While he held the other hand up to his head, there wasn't much damage, because thankfully his bed was low to the ground, but he still didn't appreciate the carpet burns or the knock to his skull. Why didn't that work? Why hadn't any of it worked? What exactly had he done to activate his quirk in the first place? Got him it he said, anger welling up inside him. This was supposed to be life-changing. Why couldn't anything in his life go right? Izuku threw the comic away from him in anger, and promptly fell onto his face again from where he was floating three feet off of the ground. Oh, after Izuku's short and very embarrassing, thank god nobody was watching attempt at flight, he had cleaned himself up and managed to figure some things out about his quirk after rigorous and incredibly awesome testing. In the end, Izuku had figured out a few basic things about his quirk. The first, and clearest, given how his second impromptu meeting with his carpet had occurred, was that he had to be in physical contact with the material that he was mimicking. This was why his attempts at reusing the shadow clone technique had failed. The second was that he could only mimic one ability from one character at a time. This was figured out by the fact he couldn't use any ability other than flight while pretending to be Superman. This was a bit annoying, but it just meant that he had to be a bit more careful with what ability he mimicked for what situation. The third discovery was that his mimic only lasted for a total of 10 minutes, as shown by his third painful meeting with the carpet that had occurred when his 10 minutes had, despite him still holding the American comic. He also couldn't use the ability, any ability, until exactly 5 minutes later, so 10 minutes on, 5 minutes cooldown. The fourth, and perhaps most interesting aspect, was that anything created by his mimicking would stick around after the time limit was up, a factor that was currently being tested by yet another shadow clone that he had created just over four hours earlier. A clone that was spending his valuable existence arguing with people over the All Might forums, at least he wasn't saying anything that Izuku himself wouldn't. The fifth and final discovery was that telling any of this to his mother would cause her to faint again. Hopefully she'd remember everything he'd said when she woke up. In the end, Izuku decided to go to sleep, he would go shopping tomorrow after school. There was an old comic book shop a few blocks away from his middle school where he would get as much as he could carry. To be a hero, he would need as much variety as possible. Who knew what he would come up against? Apparently, one of the things he would come up against was a horrific slime monster intent on eating him whole, or absorbing him, or possessing him. Izuku wasn't quite sure. And as his breathing was restricted and the edges of his vision were starting to blur he wasn't really in the mood to think about it for any extended amount of time. Ha 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 ha. I hope you got a good quirk kid. I wouldn't want my invisibility cloak to be a boring one the monster gurgled. The sound muffled by the slime covering Izuku's ears. Good quirk. Izuku thought rapidly. Perhaps it was the pain he was in, or the shock of the random attack that had caused him to suddenly forget. But yes, Izuku did in fact have a good quirk. A very good quirk and he was currently carrying a bag full of recently bought material to draw from. With a choking movement that caused his lungs to lurch as they tried to instinctually suck in air, Izuku managed to twist his arm behind him and into the hole in his backpack that he had been annoyed with only hours earlier. The moment his fingers brushed upon paper he activated his quirk. He didn't even have any idea what it was. Hopefully it was a good one. Boost. The effect was immediate. First, a large metal gauntlet appeared on his left fist, violently sending the slime covering it away in every direction as its existence instantly displaced it. And second, Izuku's strength doubled immediately, taking the surprised slime by even more surprise and allowing Izuku to pull away from the monster whose grip was unprepared for such a sudden increase in strength. 
Boost. It might have been the fact that Izuku was suddenly four times stronger than he had been only ten seconds ago. Or maybe it was because this was his first opportunity to use his quirk against, well, anything. But Izuku took the opportunity to attack, twisting around as fast as he could. Which was about four times faster than a normal person, Izuku rocketed his armored fist into the shocked villain. His fist sunk into the thing with a schlick, and stayed there. Because of course, physical strength wasn't particularly useful against liquid, no matter how viscous it was. Boost. The noise was muffled by the slime. Izuku slowly looked up into the glaring eyes of the monster. Heh. <laughs> As sorry about that. I'll just Izuku tried and failed to pull his arm out of the slime um. See could you let go of my fist please? The glare intensified oh he chuckled you're not going anywhere kid. The slime making up the villain's body exploded outwards. Every molecule rushing towards Izuku at almost invisible speed. The only intention was to consume and kill Izuku. A goal that the monster probably would have succeeded with were it not for the fact it was immediately blown to pieces with nothing but air pressure. Smash. A very familiar voice shouted. Apparently, while physical force wasn't that useful on liquid, overwhelming physical force was another matter entirely. Standing in the space where the slime had previously existed was an extremely muscular man with a fist extended and a massive grin on his face. In his other hand, hanging about two feet off of the ground was Izuku, being held by the scruff of his uniform as easily as if he weighed the same as a bunch of grapes. It's all right now the man said, with more cheer than Izuku thought was humanly possible I am here now. All Might had produced enough air pressure with a single hit to absolutely decimate the creature, of course. What was more impressive to Izuku was the fact that he was being held up by his hero. The hero, the number one greatest person in the entire world. All Might. And so, in a wonderful impression of his mother, Izuku fainted. Izuku rapidly blinked his way into consciousness and then immediately had to squint his eyes closed again, as any person lying on his back and staring into the sky would have to. Izuku was just about to wonder just why. He was lying on his back, in a storm drain, when a voice cut across the empty air. Are you alright now my boy? Izuku shot up from where he was lying and turned quickly towards the origin of the voice. Standing not 15 feet away from him was All Might. He was also flipping through Izuku's personal notebook that he had clearly taken from the bag sitting next to him. This is very well made son. He boomed happily. Have you perhaps considered becoming a hero? With a mind like this I am sure you would do fantastically. All Might, All Might, had told him he would be a great hero. With a brief moment of hyperventilation, broken up by an occasional page flip from the man himself, Izuku managed to answer him. Why yes, I've always wanted to be a hero. He bowed from his sitting position, something that was actually quite painful thank you for saying something so kind. No problem my boy. All Might grinned I hope to see you at UA soon. UA. Izuku couldn't help but ask. That's right Midoriya-sen. I'm going to be teaching there next year. You know my name. Izuku exclaimed in surprise. In response, All Might held up his notebook and waved it around a little. Izuku's name was written on the front. Uh, he scratched his cheek, embarrassed. Now All Might placed the notebook back into Izuku's backpack. I have to get this guy to the police. He tapped the bottles of green liquid that Izuku hadn't noticed before, sitting in the pockets of his cargo pants. Apparently in the time that Izuku was out All Might had somehow gathered up the possibly hundreds of pieces of the destroyed villain and somehow forced them into the bottles. Izuku blinked as he saw an eye floating in the bottle glare at him. That was something to ignore. All Might crouched down to jump away, his customary way of transportation, before Izuku spoke up again. W wait, he shouted, causing the number one hero to pause in his actions. What is the matter? The hero questioned with a quirked eyebrow. Can I have your autograph? All Might had left a very happy Izuku, just over ten minutes beforehand who had spent all that time simply staring and giggling intermittently at the autograph taking up a whole two pages of his precious notebook. It wasn't quirk information, but Izuku would make an exception this one time. Maybe he would write in a special All Might section next to it. After all, his personal interaction with the hero had left him with a good few new ideas and observations. Maybe he would even. Are you just going to sit here all day or are you going to explain to me what the hell is going on? The green glowing crystal embedded in the still there gauntlet on his left hand growled angrily. Ah Izuku screamed. Izuku walked into his home with a heavy sigh. He dropped his bag by the door and took his shoes off putting them in the usual place. Then he walked through the hallway door into his house, well, apartment, and attempted to make his way to the couch where his mother was already sitting and enjoying some game show on TV. Unfortunately his left arm seemed to have a different idea. Alright, you're home now, are you gonna tell me what's going on now? Izuku hung his head blearily. He had hoped that D-Drake, the thing he had inadvertently summoned onto his left hand had forgotten that he had promised to explain everything when he got home. He had hoped this, because he had absolutely no idea what had happened. Izuku dear, when did you get home? Inko turned to him with a look of confusion on her face. I thought you had been home for a while now. Izuku's eyes flicked to his room where he had left a clone that morning. Had it really stuck around all day? 
Ooh, that's probably my clone. I thought that she paused and took a moment to shiver that hat. Poofed. Different clone Izuku waved her off as if it was normal. Which, he supposed, it probably would be in the future. Hey honey. Yeah? Izuku replied. What's that thing on your arm? She pointed down to the metallic red gauntlet inlaid with perhaps one of the biggest jewels she had ever seen that still existed around his fist. Oh he let out a nervous chuckle it's nothing Rhea. My name is Diedrig the Welsh Heavenly Dragon. It is a pleasure to meet you Mrs. Midoriya the dragon introduced himself politely. Inko stared at him for a second before finally responding your arm can speak now. I'm a dragon not an arm the gauntlet huffed. A dragon. Who whatever Izuku had wanted to say in response was quickly cut off by his mother, once again, fainting. Izuku blinked. She had made it much longer this time. Perhaps they'd eventually be able to get through a conversation again without her fainting. It would be nice, Izuku thought idly. And so, moving in a now quite practiced set of movements, he set his mother down on the couch, covered her with a blanket and turned the TV off. She'd be up in time for dinner. Diedrag took that moment to speak up. Does she always do this? Stepping into his room. Izuku was met by yet another situation he didn't really want to deal with at the moment. His clone was drifting slowly in front of him, tongue sticking out in concentration and Superman comic wrapped around his arm with a rubber band, four feet off the ground. Noticing Izuku's entry, his clone looked up at him. Hey, I think I've gotten the hang of this flying thing. The clone blinked what the heck is that thing? I'm a dragon. The clone's eyes widened in shock for a moment before it fell to the floor with a crash, its concentration broken suddenly. In a poof of smoke, Izuku had to brace himself with the door frame as just over 24 hours of memories instantly rushed into his head. The first thing to note was that he had, in fact lost those arguments he had apparently participated in on the All Might forums the night before. The second thing was this without something to do, Izuku apparently got very bored. And so, he now had another page of notes filled about his quirk mostly just specific statistics and ideas for the future there were quite a lot including clones. Speaking of, it was extremely useful to know that his clones could also mimic abilities. The page after those notes, Izuku ripped out. It was just some random drivel about the horrifying mortality of being a clone and how he knew he would eventually pop in something about a coop, blah, blah, blah. The page after that, however, was much more interesting, and explained why the clone had had a comic rubber banded around its arm. It was a design for a new costume that helped him make use of his new abilities. To use any of his abilities, Izuku had already determined that he needed to be in contact with some material. Although, his eyes flicked to Diedrake. Perhaps it would be better if he knew what he was touching from now on. His clone had figured out that the contact just had to be through skin not his fingers, and so he had drawn up a basic design. After a small test to make sure the theory was sound of a new superhero suit which placed armor on his arms legs and back which opened up to skin and allowed him to place manga books or comics in there while still protecting the areas in question. For some strange reason he had taken out the All Might ears and smile from the original and replaced it with a hood and what looked to be a stylized gas mask. Weird. So you can mimic abilities, eh? Diedrag questioned. Izuku jumped slightly. Diedrag had been quiet for quite a while. Yeah, I can he frowned wait, how did you know that? I can see what you see Diedrag explained this is quite an interest in world I've found myself in. Izuku sat down heavily in his computer chair and brought the gauntlet up to his eye level I just don't really understand what's going on, my mimic only lasts 10 minutes. Why are you still here he paused, why are you alive? Izuku added hesitantly. I think I've got the answer to those questions. Your quirk, as you call it, makes it so anything you create, constructs, shall we say, stick around even after your 10 minutes are up, your clone for example. How did you know that? I can see your memories. He shot upright in his chair. You can see my memories. Shut up and let me explain, brat. The dragon grumbled incoherently for a few seconds as to why I'm alive. Your power might be a little more complicated than you think. Izuku held in his question in fear of being shouted at again. He did not want to make a dragon angry. I've looked around in here a bit and we're stuck together. Diedrag seemed almost amused at that. That couldn't be right. See, I'm something called a sacred gear, which are gifts blessed upon people by the god of the Bible. The what? Izuku cut him off. I said shut up brat. Now if you'll let me finish a sound much like one clearing their throat emanated from the crystal a sacred gear is a blessing by god that is implanted into the soul of a human when they're born. Now, when I was alive I was killed by that god and my soul was forced into one of these things to be reincarnated every hundred years or so in random human souls. So when you mimicked me, you got everything, soul connection included. That was a lot of information so I brought a dragon across dimensions or something. Izuku's voice was very small. No, nah, I said didn't I. You mimicked me, I'm just a copy, a perfect, fully formed copy, but still a copy, I was made by your abilities. Which is why none of my powers will work for you right now. You mean that boost thing? That's the one, you catch on quick don't ya? Izuku scratched his cheek and shifted slightly in his seat. Praise wasn't something he was used to quite yet. 
He was sure he'd get used to it when he became an awesomely famous hero. Was he hyperventilating? Oi, brat. The crystal flashed, and Izuku took a second to settle himself again. I'm good, please, go on D-Drag. Right. Anyway, my powers since I was made by yours. Mine ain't working quite right. I'm not gonna be able to do anything for you. I suspect you'd probably have to mimic my power again for anything to work D-Drag let out a chuckle course that won't keep me down for long. No measly quirk is gonna stop the Welsh Heavenly Dragon down for long. You're gonna be killing gods in no time. Izuku fainted. Huh D-Drag remarked they both do it. Izuku fell to the floor with a gasp of air, the oxygen feeling harsh against his throat and way too cold in his lungs, despite it being on midday. At least the ground was nice and soft. Maybe it wouldn't be too bad if he took a short nap, just to regain his strength. Izuku closed his eyes. Oi brat, is that really all you've got? Izuku opened his eyes again and groaned. D-Drag, please don't take this the wrong way, but could you just shut up for one moment? The comment was perhaps a little out of character for Izuku Midoriya. But after five months of a grouchy and frankly, perverted, old dragon shouting at him in his head, that was the relationship they had cultivated. What was that? The dragon shouted. Izuku groaned again and attempted to drive his head further into the sand. Sorry D-Drag, do you want my help or not? You have to keep at this if you want to get anywhere. Izuku's hand heated up slightly and if he hadn't had his face pressed into the lovely soft sand he would have noticed the green glow becoming slightly brighter in response to the dragon's words. Izuku turned his head to the side so he could start breathing again and let out a shuddering sigh. You're right, all right. Give me a minute with that he pushed up from the ground, cracked his back and started running again. The this that D-Drake had been referring to was the training regime that Izuku had been forcing himself through since the dragon had first appeared. D-Drake had made the wonderful point that Izuku was in fact an idiot. An idiot that could have been spending his life training to become a hero despite his quirklessness, instead of wallowing in self-pity and patheticness, a word that did not exist, but described his actions perfectly. Izuku had always said that he wanted to be a hero, that there was nothing he had wanted more, that it was his life goal and what had he done to achieve this. Nothing, nada, not one thing. Well, if you didn't count his numerous hero notebooks, which d Drag didn't. Strong mind, strong body, strong fighter. That's what d Drag had said. And he had started enforcing it as soon as he could by pushing Izuku into training as soon as he could, by shouting at him until he agreed. Luckily the logic was sound and Izuku had come willingly. Otherwise the dragon would have never let him sleep. And so, five months on, he was running as fast as he could down a beach piled up with literal tons of junk. It was a beach close to his house that had been abandoned by the public due to the fact that basically anything thrown into the ocean anywhere close to it washed up on the shore. It would take months and way too much money for the government to clean it up, so they never bother. What this all meant was that Izuku had a private and large place to train as well as a place to almost legally practice with his quirk, which was extremely useful, seeing as there were no quirk training classes for kids his age. Those things had finished in his younger years. They were designed after all to only give a basic understand and ability of use of the person's quirk so that they didn't accidentally hurt people with it. Anything more was relegated to personal training and private or further schooling that required the use of quirks, like the hero course or... Well, Izuku didn't actually know what else, he had never bothered to look. But people with electricity quirks could probably use them for energy companies or something, right? Regardless of that, due to the particular nature of Izuku's quirk being so unique and the particular nature of most fictional abilities being so incredibly destructive, he needed a large open space to practice using his abilities. He couldn't exactly train flight in the comfort of his bedroom after all. And speaking of his abilities, and that's time. This time Izuku managed to fall backwards into a sitting position instead of forwards onto his already abused face. Ugh he let out a heavy breath and leant back onto his hands. That felt like it was twice as long as last time. That's because it was. Of course it was. That was predictable. Hey, you can't get better if you don't push yourself. The dragon said joyfully. You don't have to sound so happy about my pain. I wouldn't if you weren't so funny. I hate you. I love you too. Izuku flopped back onto the sand and stretched his arms out in an attempt to alleviate the pain racking his limbs. You get ten minutes and then we get to train in your powers he could almost hear the grin. Why am I listening to you again? Cause I've been with some of the most powerful people that have ever existed. No, that's not it. Cause we're stuck together. That's the one. Training his quirk was easily the best experience that Izuku ever had. If it wasn't always easy, the dented fridge from his 50th attempt to fly showed this clearly. What was also fun was that today was new ability day. The training regime that d Drake had designed meant that he would train with a single ability for a month and then choose a new one to train the month after. That being said, some of them didn't take that long to learn, like X-ray vision, and others were just too difficult to learn, like flight, so he could go through a few before he found the one to train with. 
It was also important to spend so long on each ability because the fact that he was able to use the ability didn't mean that he was able to use it well. Every time he started from level 0, it had taken just over a week to be able to make more than 3 shadow clones. The ability he trained first. What had also become apparent was that while his ability lasted 10 minutes with a 5 minute cooldown, it also depended on his stamina. Using the ability cost him energy and the more tired he was, the less time he had to use anything, the cooldown expanding correspondingly. With Drake's training these effects were beginning to lessen, and his training of his quirk was obviously improving his ability to use it, as it would anyone's, but it still wasn't perfect. At the moment, he could only really use it 10 times a day, with the use down to only 1 minute and the cooldown up to 50 minutes on the 10th use. Of course, despite all of that it was still the best quirk ever. More importantly it was his quirk and he wouldn't change it for anything. Izuku sat on the beach and closed his eyes, his backpack sitting open in front of him, still filled with what was left from his random shopping spree months earlier. Every month he'd pick out a book at random, learn an ability and put it on his new shelf in his room, leaving only abilities that he hadn't yet attempted. And so, with a dramatically raised arm, Izuku blindly shoved his hand into his backpack, rummaged around for a second, so the book he chose wasn't just the one on top, not that it actually mattered, but it felt like it was a bit more by chance. He pulled out a book and opened his eyes. Elfin lied. There was a picture of a pink-haired girl on the front. All right then, Elfin lied it is. Although it does look a little cute as he, hope there's something good. Izuku said, hoping, because as always, the first time he got something new, he'd activate his power blindly. His reasoning being that if he figured things out by himself he might think of things that the story didn't show. It also gave him an undiluted experience with the ability instead of having any expectations beforehand from reading it. None of this meant that he wouldn't immediately binge anything he could after using it blind a few times. But it was still important to do. While it wouldn't hurt at any rate, Izuku activated his quirk, something he could actively notice now. It felt like a flowing warmth that filled his body from the point of contact to the fiction and stayed there until the ten minutes, or however long it was, were up. It was the same feeling he had thought he imagined when it first activated with the shadow clone. This flowing warmth was also accompanied with the sudden sensation of having two extra prehensile arms suddenly sticking out of his upper back, arms which immediately flopped to the ground, seeing as Izuku didn't have them ten seconds ago and had absolutely no idea how to move them. Izuku tried to turn around to get a look at his floppy arms, but let out a frown at the sight of nothing at all lying behind him. There wasn't even an indent on the sand. Luckily the arms appeared to be around 10 feet long, so Izuku could turn around to crouch without them being pulled away from his reach. Izuku could feel the arm under his hand, but there wasn't actually anything there. It was weird to see and feel his actual hand being unable to pass through an area in space. He could feel his actual hand with the long invisible one too. The sand underneath the arm didn't move no matter how much Izuku pressed the invisible arm down, which meant that it was probably intangible to anything but him too or at least that would be a working theory until proven otherwise. That would be a problem. First order of business would be making the thing tangible. So, two hours later and on his fifth usage, Izuku stood, wide stance, arm outstretched, sweat pouring down his skin like a river, in front of the old refrigerator he had dented two months prior. A single one of his two invisible arms shuddering in midair, ready to perform an attack. He had managed to make the arm tangible, through a hell of a lot of concentrating and was finally ready to attack with it. He pulled in a breath, and swung his actual arm in front of him as if he was hitting something. It was easier to have the invisible one follow his own actual movements. The invisible arm swung, fast and violent, enough to kick up a cloud of sand just over four feet beneath it. It swished through the air, through the fridge and stopped on the other side. On the other side, of the still perfectly intact fridge. Oh god it, lost my focus the arm had obviously become intangible again during the movement. Maybe it was too much for your first go. Drag chipped in. Izuku hummed an affirmation yeah he let out a breath and attempted to wipe the sweat from his forehead with his already soaked tracksuit sleeve yeah. Let's try something easier. Something easier would simply be pushing the fridge instead of trying to damage it in some way. Izuku raised his arm again. The invisible one mirroring his movements. He let out a low sigh and attempted to center himself. Absolute focus on keeping the arm tangible. He stretched his arm forward slowly. It impacted the fridge. All right, we have contact, and now. He pushed the hand further forwards. But instead of the fridge simply tipping backwards as Izuku had expected, the entire top fell off with a screech of metal before landing in the sand with a resounding crash. What the? Izuku stared in disbelief at the missing top half of the metal box. Or more accurately, he stared at the perfectly flat cut, which had bisected the entire thing allowing it to be pushed apart in the first place. The perfect cut which followed exactly along the path he had swung in the first place. He hadn't lost focus on the tangibility. 
He just hadn't felt the fridge at all because the cut was so impossibly smooth. Well that might be the coolest thing I've ever seen. Now I've seen better. Well, excuse me, Mr. God Killer I thought it was pretty awesome. Hey, you're young. You'll see things way more awesome than this. Izuku's mouth twitched upwards I hope so. But, he scratched his cheek in confusion how does an arm cut something? Izuku stared up at the grand building in front of him, its four six-story spires reaching into the sky, representing the heights of the heroes trained there and making it so that looking at the building directly from any of its four sides resulted in it looking like the letter H. Izuku was sure that was a coincidence and it was made because of the majestic heights its graduates reached, and I'm sure you're an idiot. The moment was ruined. As usual, look d Drake Izuku said to his slightly glowing left arm you've got to keep quiet until the exam is over. I still don't see why the dragon grumbled. Because I don't want to find out what people would do to me if they found out I had a sentient god-killing dragon attached to my left arm Izuku attempted to smile at two female students giving him a strange look as they passed, likely due to the fact that he seemed to be talking to himself. You worry too much. And you don't worry enough he glanced at his watch now shut up, I'm going to be late. And with that, Izuku took his first step forwards to being a hero, and immediately caught his foot on his other leg, causing him to fall forwards towards the stone ground. Something slapped against his back. Hapachako Yuraka said after activating her quirk to stop the Izuku from falling. There we go. She chirped happily it would be bad luck for you to fall on your first. Achako trailed off into silence when she finally noticed. That while she had negated the boy's gravity, and therefore prevented him from falling anymore, she had only managed to do so after his face had already been planted into the ground. Ugizuku groaned. The noise muffled by the stone his face was pressed against. Hedi ha ha. Achako looked around them for the source of the chuckling and frowned. That wasn't very nice at all. She sent a scowl towards the only person near them, an ashen blonde-haired boy with an ugly look on his face. I'm so sorry she apologized desperately as she cancelled her ability and attempted to help Izuku up. I should have caught you sooner. And no Izuku waved her apology off while attempting to hold in his stutters it's not your fault. Besides he sighed I'm used to it he rubbed off the small stone stills tucked to his face and made sure his nose wasn't broken. Used to it. Achako wondered what he meant by that. How does someone get used to falling on their face? Izuku shook his head in an attempt to clear the pain. See thank you for your help. Uh, Uraka Achako Achako supplied helpfully. Uraka San Izuku finished I'm Midoriya Izuku. I it's a pleasure to meet you Izuku stuck out his hand in greeting, which Achako happily took and started shaking, a smile adorning her face. It's nice to meet you too. Suddenly a beeping sound emanated from her skirt pocket and she let go of his hand to pull out her phone. Ah she yelped it's about to start. She turned the alarm off and turned back to him. I'm sorry Izuku-kun, I have to leave. She ran off towards the entrance to UACU around. She shouted back to him. Izuku stared after her until she disappeared behind the wall. Wow he had just talked to a really cute girl. What an incredible experience. The The moment was ruined. As usual, as it turned out, the 15th post that he had spent maybe a month researching online of exactly what the UA Hero course entrance exam contained was correct, which meant that he would be using Battle Plan O, one of his favorites. His clones would certainly be happy. Only Plan O actually made use of them. Of course, before he could begin the exam, he had to register his support item, Aka the comic book he was currently holding. He had brought a backpack full of each book he needed for each specific plan. Luckily Yue had lockers for them to use, so he didn't have to register the whole thing, which would have taken ages with all the specific forms he would have had to fill out. With only one book, he only needed to fill in one. Support items for anyone who wasn't a hero were extremely regulated, so the line to registering them for use in the entrance exam was luckily very short. There are only two people in front of him. A blonde-haired boy wearing some sort of belt and a much larger brown-haired teen with a plastic bag full of small canisters. And because they were heavily regulated, even the exam had limitations on what could be registered in the first place. Support items enhancing the use of a quirk, no matter how minor, were not allowed. The only items that could be taken in were ones that without. The user in question would be physically incapable of using their quirks, which was apparently the case for only three students. Although Izuku had taken quite a while to change and store his backpack, so there might have been more earlier. Before he knew it he was standing in front of the registration desk. Form the bubbly teenager asked, holding out her hand. He noted her foreign accent and features. Izuku gave her the paper and waited silently as she read through it. A comic book? She questioned. Iwa Izuku stared, not expecting any questions yet. Um, how do you? She trailed off do you have your quirk registration from on you? Izuku's heart jumped in his chest. D do I and need it? She frowned and looked down at his form. Well, not usually, but I don't see how a comic book would help you. Do you need paper or something? Oh his heart settled back into its usual place oh, no, no. 
I can mimic fictional abilities. The girl stared at him, the form slipping out of her hands as he eyes widened as far as they could. Why 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 you can mimic powers? She was almost shouting. Izuku took a step back yeah. He wasn't sure he wanted to continue the conversation. Any ability. Her grin started bordering on manic. I if there's a book for it. He leaned back further. Why couldn't she just sign the form and let him go? Even Harry Potter. Well, Izuku didn't know what that was, but he assumed that it was a book, from the way things had progressed I guess. Marry me. W what? She leaped over the table towards him, her arms elongating as she attempted to grab him. Izuku decided that right then would be a great time to take a morning sprint, coincidentally in the opposite direction to the girl chasing him. He decided that it was also a fantastic time to scream at the top of his lungs. Help me. It had taken five minutes of running until he had encountered one of the teachers, the hero power loader, how cool who decided to step in and help, and then another 15 minutes until he could calm down the teenage girl and make her sign his registration form. Izuku did not like the look she had sent his way when he left. He feared for his romantic life, but he was finally in front of the entrance to the fourth testing arena, where he and about 30 other students would be taking their entrance exam. Unfortunately there were still 5 minutes until it actually started, so Izuku began flipping through his comic while he waited. He had already read this one so it wasn't really that interesting. But it did mean that he missed the other students around him sending confused or offended glances his way, especially the glare of the bespectacled teen that had shouted at him during the introductory lecture. It also meant that when President Mike suddenly shouted start from behind them, he wasn't confused, but rather startled out of his reading and unlike his fellow competitors acted immediately. Izuku activated his quirk and disappeared in a cloud of blue smoke and an echoing sound. Bamf! Izuku reappeared in his room. Blinking away the sudden change in lighting and images of the weird blue place he went whenever he teleported, he flicked on the lights and grinned towards the five clones standing in his bedroom, each one dressed in an identical tracksuit and holding a different book. He turned to the closest one and held out his arm grab on he said. The clone grabbed him in with a bamf and a cloud of smoke. Izuku and his passenger appeared again at the entrance to the exam. They nodded at each other and the clone ran off to join his still exiting competitors. Izuku stumbled forwards and grabbed his knees to steady himself, before bringing a hand to his mouth as his stomach churned wildly. Teleportation was always stupidly disorientating. Izuku pushed the feelings down and stood back up. This wasn't the time to get sick, there were four more clones to teleport in. Bamf! Just under eight minutes later, due to the breaks he had to take so he didn't throw up or miss his destination due to the disorientation, Izuku was running through the examination area, searching for a robot that didn't already have people around it. He currently had absolutely no idea how many points he held as he wouldn't get any memories from his clones until they popped and none of them had died yet. Izuku twisted around a corner and found his first robot. Or rather, it found him. A dark green metal arm flew towards his face, at speeds that would make an Olympic sprinter flinch. Izuku wasn't an Olympic sprinter, but he had been trained by one of the most powerful beings in existence for the past 10 months. So instead of flinching, he ducked under the swinging arm and twisted around the robot before slamming his armored left hand into the side of it. The metal buckled under the much stronger unyielding material of the gauntlet, and the insides of the robot shattered, flying out in every direction. Izuku kicked the remains of the machine to make sure it was properly dead. When it didn't respond he loosened back into a casual stance well, if nothing else, I have at least three points. With that, he ran off again in search of more things to smash. Sixteen points later Izuku was running down the main street in the faux cityscape along with most, if not all, of his fellow competitors who were in the process of destroying the remaining robots. He could even see one of his clones finishing off a three-pointer and several students looking between them with confusion. Is the exam ending soon? There aren't many robots left Izuku wondered out loud. He glanced to the side as one of his clones walked up next to him. How many points did you get boss? The clone asked. 18, how about you? 27. The original Izuku blinked at the clone wow, that's way more than me. The clone crossed his arms and glared off to the side it's not that impressive, Cyclops got double that. D double. A beat passed between them before they both started grinning. We're going to be heroes. The clone laughed. Damn right. Izuku looked around them. Nobody was fighting any robots anymore, they were just standing around and counting their fingers. All right Izuku concluded. The exam's over he turned to the clone and raised an arm time to die. The clone pouted at him, which probably would have been a lot more effective if he weren't a teenage boy. All right he finally agreed. But before Izuku could kill himself a great crash racked the arena. As the ground exploded outwards and several of the buildings at the end of the main street fell over from the force of the 50-foot robot that had risen from the ground and started lumbering towards them. Every teenager there took one look at the massive zero-pointer robot, turned, and started running away. Izuku was about to turn away himself until Dedrag spoke up, stopping him and his clones in their tracks, the message audible to all of them. Kid, wait. The dragon suddenly said. What is it Dedrag? 
Izuku asked, while dodging another team that was about to run into him. Look over at the robot. He took Diedrig's word and saw what was wrong. Under a pile of rubble in front of the robot, desperately attempting to pull her leg free was the girl that had attempted to help him in front of the school. Achako Yuraraka, the nice girl who had tried to help him was about to get crushed by a 200-ton robot for his school exam. Not on his watch. His clone beside him let out a gasp and started running forwards. Diedrig the original Izuku barked how much time do I have left? About 20 seconds, make it count. Got it Izuku nodded to himself and concentrated on where Achako was trapped, he would only get one shot. Bamf. Izuku appeared in an explosion of blue smoke that immediately sent Achako into a coughing fit and stopped her pulling on her leg anymore. Not wasting any time, he quickly crouched down and grabbed her arm, throwing it over his shoulders. Get ready. He told her. Wa Achako started. Bamf. T. Achako finished. With another explosion of smoke they reappeared in the middle of the other students, who had managed to notice what was going on with the blue smoke that suddenly appeared next to the robot's foot. But before anyone could say anything, another explosion echoed across the arena causing them all to snap back towards the robot, or what was left of it. Diedrake had sent the message of Achako's endangerment to every single version of him, all of which came up with a plan to save her, all of which they executed at the same time. Izuku won, or as he preferred, Cyclops, ran to the center of the street to get a better shot at the thing. He only had about a minute left, so he had to make this count. Cyclops ground his feet into the ground beneath him and stared up at the giant robot, missing the cloud of blue smoke appearing just outside his field of vision and lifted up the pair of specially purchased rose quartz sunglasses. F whoosh. A great beam of blindingly bright red energy burst forth from his eyes and crashed into the robot's head, sending it reeling back from the force, only for the concussive force to break through the comparatively fragile metal and burst out the back of the machine, heading off into the sky. But before he could do anything more, what remained of the robot was struck with what looked to be a blur of green, followed by what had to be almost a hundred lightning bolts striking the exact place the green streak had hit, and before he could properly register what had happened, another clone appeared next to his and opened his mouth. The clone, Banshee, Cyclops assumed, took in an extremely deep breath. Cyclops only had a moment to cover his ears before a screech louder than anything he had ever heard exploded from his identical twin. Shockwaves of sound rocketed towards the falling electrified metal. They impacted it hard and piled up one after the other from the ongoing screen, resulting in the 200-ton machine being forced backwards even further, its top half threatening to fall backwards. Cyclops quietly thanked God that he was just a clone and disappeared in a poof of smoke alongside Banshee, blood dripping out of both of their ears. Twenty seconds earlier, on the closest rooftop to the Zero Pointer, Izuku Clone 3, or as he liked to be called, Storm, stared at the behemoth in front of him, even at a rook level, the machine still towered over him. He grimaced, it would take more lighting than he could summon to take that thing down. But, he looked to the street Cyclops was already there, about to take his sunglasses off maybe he wouldn't have to take it down alone. It took half a second to come up with a plan. Storm extended his power outwards, his eyes coloring white upon the activation. The wind billowed around him, under his control. Now, no matter what Izuku tried he had never quite managed to get flight down. What with it being such a complicated power, no matter what type of flight it was, even using wind to lift himself up. So, instead of floating into the air, Storm angled himself forwards and increased the winds 100-fold, instantly shooting him forwards at incredible speed, becoming nothing but a blur to any observer. Storm ignored the expected blast of red energy ripping through the head of the robot and focused on the rapidly developing dark clouds above him. He could almost feel the static building up. Suddenly he slammed into the metal and reacted accordingly. He pulled. The sky above him exploded downwards, ripping through the air, bringing the smell of burning ozone with it. It would have been impossible to bring down this much on anything other than his own location. It was a good job he was a clone. The poof of smoke was lost in the raining lightning. Sunspot and Iceman, the two last Izuku clones nodded towards one another. The robot had already been defeated, and Achako was saved. But their fellow brothers had gone out in blazes of glory against the robot and there was no way that they wouldn't be doing the same. They had been working together throughout the exam, to cover all bases, fire and ice in every direction, so it would make sense to go out together too. A combination attack would be perfect, seeing that the other clones were going to take out the robot, and that the original had saved Achako already. They had gone to run around the back of the robot, where the least damage would already have been done, making their attack all the more impressive. Sunspot turned to Iceman you ready. Iceman grinned. Let's do this. Immediately he thrust his arms forward to the ground in front of the falling robot. His body shifted into ice and a thick stream of frost shot out of each hand towards the ground. Ice started forming almost instantly. Iceman grunted and with a push of his energy the streams increased rapidly in speed. 
Suddenly the patch of ice on the ground erupted into a pointed spire of ice that rocketed into the sky, ripping through the undamaged metal of the massive zero-pointer's back, skewering it and forcing its fall to stop, with it stuck on the skyscraper of ice. A moment later, the entire metal frame was covered in a thick layer of ice and frost. Iceman grinned and stepped back, before turning to Sunspot and exchanging a high five. Well done Sunspot complimented, but that's nothing compared to this. Sunspot focused on the solar energy he had been absorbing for the duration of the exam and set his arm alight, destroying what remained of his tracksuit sleeve, and thrust it directly into the spire of ice, melting and instantly superheating the ice around it. With a moment of concentration he sent a stream of fire out of his palm and forced it to pool at the base of the ice spike, boiling all the water it came into contact with. Then, he forced it upwards. The pillar of fire, twice as thick as Izuku himself, surrounded by a pillar of boiling water surged into the sky inside the ice and directly into the robot. It took less than a second for it to start steaming. Now, as any high schooler would know, when metal heats up, it expands. But this much metal, with this many moving parts that had just recently been super cooled and was now being superheated, this metal decided to do something else. It exploded. In an instant the entire 50-foot robot violently shattered outwards into a few million rapidly cooling pieces. Luckily, with the robot already basically on its back, this basically amounted in a brief hail of metal situated around the area that everyone had already evacuated from. But it did look extremely awesome. Sunspot and Iceman shared another high five before activating their powers and shooting each other in the head with ice and fire respectively. Izuku the real Izuku winced at the sudden influx of memories that appeared with the brilliant and awesome overkill of the Zero Pointer. While he heard Achako whisper next to him I wonder who did that. Izuku blushed and scratched his cheek, but didn't say anything. The indirect praise was already more than he could handle. Suddenly a new voice cut in, startling all the collected teens out of their odd shock. My, my, that was quite the spectacle. I hope nobody was hurt. Izuku turned to see a very short old woman wearing a doctor's coat and a pink and green visor, with a decorative giant needle walking stick aiding her approach. Or at least Izuku hoped it was decorative. One of the other teenagers spoke up hey he said it's the pro hero recovery girl. Would you like a candy? Recovery girl asked and pushed some into the hands of a reluctant teen nearby. Those of you who aren't hurt, please exit the arena. The test is now over she gestured to the exit. The teens looked at one another awkwardly before starting to make their way to the exit. Finally recovery girl stopped in front of Izuku and Achako, using her quirk to heal a few of the more beat up competitors on the way. She smiled benignly at them. That was quite the attack on the zero pointer young man she said. Immediately Achako's head snapped towards him. The look of awe she had previously reappearing. You did that. Izuku's blush increased and he looked away from her in embarrassment and recovery girl continued. Are all your brothers okay? She questioned. Brothers. He didn't know no. They're clones. They disappear Izuku said. Recovery girl arched an eyebrow oho. Really now? Izuku nodded then I suppose all their points are your points. You're going to make quite the impact. Now, let's have a look at that leg. She turned to Achako and started examining her, preventing Izuku from responding to her statement. Another pro hero had complimented him. Hang on. What happened to all the comics the clones had been carrying? Izuku clapped his hands together and then slammed them into the sand below him, blue lightning-like energy crackling around his arms and flowing into the ground. Nothing happened. Izuku frowned and looked at the thick book open next to him, reading what was on the page. After a moment he nodded to himself and settled back onto one knee. He clapped his hands together again, the blue energy crackling into life and once more he slammed his hands into the sand. Unlike the last time, the sand rippled outwards in a shockwave beneath him. A great hand made of compacted sand twice as large as Izuku himself was, rose up and grabbed the bisected fridge sitting in front of him. With a push of energy from Izuku the hand clenched and crushed the fridge in its grip before rising higher and throwing the mutilated metal into the pile of similar scrap that had accumulated just outside the entrance of the beach. Izuku let the sand fall back onto the beach and fell back into a sitting position. He let out a breath and shook his hands in the air. Using alchemy always made his hands tingle. It was probably that weird blue electricity. Hey, kid. Izuku ignored his left arm and picked up the book still lying next to him, a comprehensive chemistry guide he had picked up the other day. It was just under a week after the UA exam and Izuku had been far too anxious to just sit around and wait for his results, and his usual exercises hadn't really been enough to say to. So he had decided to train a new ability and attempted to find a sufficiently complicated one and alchemy from Fullmetal Alchemist was not only useful but also extremely complicated. It was also unbelievably versatile. One issue that Izuku had run into during his tests was that he could only acquire one ability from one person at a time. So while he could mimic Naruto, for instance, and gain chakra he would only be able to use one technique as each one counted as a separate ability. 
He couldn't even use any energy he gained for basic strength enhancement unless that was the ability he mimicked in the first place. So if he mimicked shadow clones, he would only be able to use shadow clones. If he mimicked the racing gun, he'd only be able to use that. Although that was still way too complicated to use it was the same for everything. Magic, Kai, Chakra, Kai, whatever, one spell, one technique, one ability. All except for alchemy, or at least this type. Edward Elric's alchemy was only one technique. One ability that could be used in a hundred different ways, like creating a flame and just changing the temperature, it's still the same flame but with a different heat. Mimicking almost anyone else in the series would mean that he would only be able to use a single alchemical circle, and then he'd have to draw it in the first place. Izuku flipped the page of his book. Kid. Izuku flipped another page. I said I was sorry Deidre grumbled. And then you burst out laughing for 10 minutes. It was not 10 minutes. You're right Izuku agreed that was a low guess. It wasn't my fault. Izuku fought the sudden urge to break his own left hand. You distracted me. You're easily distractible. How is that on me? Besides you're overreacting. Thanks to you, my quirk is called Otaku. I think I'm reacting the perfect amount. Hadi ha. Izuku quickly brought his hand in front of his face and stared angrily at the glowing emerald light did you just laugh. He paused again. I cannot believe you Diedrich. I can, it was hilarious. You're not sorry at all. Izuku accused. H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
Izuku's eyes bugged out. Fifty thou. He trailed off I can't afford that. And he definitely wouldn't ask his mother to pay for that either. Not my problem. Sir the official started lowering the metal sheet that signified the office was closed. Wait. Not my problem the sheet closed and the lock at the bottom turned with a decisive click. Izuku stared blankly at the metal for a moment before blinking rapidly. Drag. Yes Izuku my good buddy. He could hear the grin. I'm going to find a way to kill you he blinked again and then I'm going to kill you. The dragon barked out a laugh ha ha ha. Good luck. Better gods than you have tried. Just open it already. It was about 10 minutes ago that his mother had burst into his room, teary-eyed and holding a thick letter from Yue, his entrance exam results. A letter that had been sitting on his desk that entire time with Izuku just sending it feverish glances from where he was sketching an updated hero costume designed to send it. If he got into Yue, he had just been writing down the specific dimensions of the hollowed-out armor pieces that made up his suite when D-Drag spoke up. But what if I failed? There are six super-powered versions of you running around that arena he let out a huff there's no way you didn't make it in. You're sure? Izuku. Yeah. Open the goddamn letter. Izuku jumped in his seat and rushed over to his desk. All right already. Izuku sat at his desk, picked up the letter and sliced it open with his official All Might letter opener with authentic battle damage. He turned it over and a holographic projector dropped out onto the desk. After hesitating for a moment, he pressed the on button. Immediately a bright screen projected into the air in front of him, filling his room with light. Izuku winced at the brightness before his eyes adjusted to the screen and blinked at what he saw. Some sort of white bear, mouse, human thing wearing a tailored suit and oversized shoes appeared on the screen grinning at him from under its pointed nose and holding up a massive pink pawed hand in greeting. Congratulations young exam participant, the mouse man said enthusiastically, as a wonderful hero to be and fantastic finisher of our prestigious exam. I have come in person to tell you, a hopeful teenager in this super large world of ours, that you have passed the UA exam with flying colors. In fact we've never seen such he stopped suddenly and looked somewhere off screen. What do you mean we have limited time? I'm not rambling am I? Oh, I'm sorry, I tend to do that, I what? Oh, right yes he turned back to the camera. Izuku Midoriya, you have passed the entrance exam and are officially a student here at UA and as our highest scoring student you get me, the headmaster to tell you. By the way, can you guess what I am? Am I a bear or a mouse? You'll never know. Oh, there's also a list of needed materials in the letter and a complete ranking of the passing hero course applicants as well as their total scores, I think you'll want to check it out. The bear man winked at him. Once more Izuku-kun, congratulations and well done on breaking the UA exam record. We're expecting big things from you. The hologram winked out of existence leaving Izuku's eyes to adjust to the sudden change in lighting again. He blinked rapidly, both to hurry the process along and also in an attempt to deal with the shock of everything he had just been told. Suddenly reclaiming his ability to move Izuku scrambled to pull the rest of the information out of the open letter. One of them was a hard plastic card, decorated in orange and green with a list of every participant and their scores on it. Izuku's eyes briefly flicked to Katsuki's name in second place with a total of 77 points. Their total points were a combination of two scores, the points gained from defeating the robotic villains and rescue points, something they were definitely not informed of before the exam. They gained more or less rescue points depending on how many heroic deeds they had completed during the exam. Most of all, how many people they rescued, what they rescued them from, and how. Izuku idly remembered he needed to breathe after 10 seconds of staring at his total score in absolute shock. He had expected to get a good score. But, 186. That was more than double the second place held by Kakin. 136 villain points and 50 rescue points. He had the highest score for both categories. Just how cool was that? Hang on. Did the mouse headmaster say he broke the UA exam record? Izuku blinked and deactivated the Byakugan nodding as his normal vision returned. Well, the Drake asked, just as I thought. No real difference he placed the manga on the purified block of metal that stood in front of him, a culmination of his last two weeks of work with alchemy. The beach was finally fully clean and he had a two-ton block of the purest steel that had ever existed, as well as several blocks of the leftovers that had come from the process. Izuku continued, except that Superman's X-ray is in color. Not really X-ray then is it? Well I can see people's skeletons if I need to he thought for a moment I suppose the Byakugan would be more useful if people actually had chakra. I'll still never get my head around a human having chakra the dragon grumbled in my world only Yakai could use it. You know Izuku frowned you haven't really told me much about your world. You're really interested. Sure. Well, for one thing the girls all had way bigger tie. Actually, I'm good. Suit yourself d Drake huffed by the way. What are you gonna do with all that metal? Then oh Izuku shrugged I'll probably give it to Power Loader Sensei. I still owe him for saving me from the crazy girl. 
Izuku shrugged again and looked over to the now shining beach, the stars reflecting beautifully in the water, which suddenly seemed all the clearer now that the beach was free of the years of scrap and waste that had washed up. He only hoped that now the thing was clear the local government would actually attempt to keep it clean this time. Well, if they didn't he could always just clean it again. It was wonderful practice for his alchemy, which was still the second most complicated ability he had. If it wasn't for his total inability to fly it would be top of the list. Are you ready for hero school tomorrow? The dragon interrupted his thoughts. I was trying not to think about that. That's why I asked. Izuku smiled. I think I'm as ready as I could ever be. Izuku laughed her. That you did he paused for a moment thank you D-Drake. No problem Izuku. Izuku was once again stood in the majestic halls of the UA High School building. Only this time he wasn't getting ready for an exam. He was dressed in the UA uniform, the one that all official students had, blazer, trousers, red tie, the usual. He was also stood in front of the biggest door that he had ever seen, the door to the class a hero course classroom. Izuku supposed that the door was that big in order to accommodate any student that had a suitably massive mutation quirk. He was also rather happy to have been placed in class A. Despite the fact that everyone who passed was placed completely at random it still made him a little giddy, as if he was in the top class. Although, if there was a system of classes that went from best to worst, with his score, he'd definitely be in the highest one. He let out a breath and attempted to calm himself before raising a hand to the giant door and pushing it open. I just hope that Kakin was put in a different claw. As soon as the door was open, he was assaulted by a wave of noise that interrupted him. Get your feet of there, right this moment. A severe-looking teen with short blue hair, glasses, and the wildest arm movements that Izuku had ever seen and vaguely recognized as the one who had admonished him during the lecture before the entrance exam, shouted at the last person that Izuku had wanted to see. Go screw yourself, Katsuki Bakugo. Or as Izuku knew him, Kaken, shouted back, raising a certain finger at the blue-haired boy. Izuku decided that it would probably be safer to surreptitiously place himself in one of the empty seats near the back of the room until they were done yelling at each other. S-C-R-R-T. Oh god damn it. His foot had caught on one of the aforementioned empty seats and dragged it across the floor. Immediately, the blue-haired teen stopped his tirade and turned towards him with an intense stare, bringing up his hand in an accusatory point. You. He shouted. Am me. Izuku answered the request, pointing at himself and desperately hoping he meant somebody else. Yes, the teen was suddenly in his face, before dropping into a deep bow. I must say sorry, he yelled. I accused you of not taking the exam seriously during President Mike's lecture and I was offended by your casual attitude before the exam itself. The Izuku attempted and failed to interject. But upon seeing some of your work during said exam, while I don't really understand your quirk, I saw that you were one of the most serious of us all. Your saving of your Raka-sen was most exemplary. I didn't even realize that saving people was graded until after the fact the teen was once again in his face. Tell me, how did you figure it out? I Izuku tried again. I must apologize again. He bowed quickly and deeply again I have forgotten to introduce myself. I am Tenya Ida. It is a pleasure to meet you. Oh likewise, I'm Midoriya Izuku he held out his hand in greeting. But instead of taking it, Ida reeled backwards, his arms flailing in the air. My 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 Midoriya Izuku. The one who destroyed the previous UA exam record. He exclaimed in shock and destroyed the zero pointer. Apparently Achako was in this class too and apparently she had just decided to tell the entire class what he did. What? A teen with yellow hair and a black streak spoke up. It stood to reason that with Ada's enthusiastic way of speech, the other teenagers in the room had taken notice. I'm Denki Kaminari, by the way. Call me Kaminari he introduced. Yeah Achako grinned up to the amassed crowd, pressing her hands together in glee. When he saved me from the robot, all his clones went and attacked it too. It was so awesome. It really wasn't thought Izuku tried for a third time before he was cut off again. Wait, were you guys in Group D? A small teen with purple balls on his head instead of hair questioned. M.M. Achako nodded in affirmation. The purple-haired boy turned to Izuku, awe very clear on his face. That thing was obliterated. What kind of quirk do you have? Wait Kaminari said I wasn't there. What exactly happened to it? We all just ran away from ours. It was incredible. The boy exclaimed he sent this beam into its head and destroyed it. While Kaminari's eyes widened in shock that Zama. Wait, I wasn't done. After the beam, there was this super loud screech and it shattered the rest of its head. And then and then, there was all this lighting that hit it, and then the entire thing froze and exploded into a million little pieces. All of the teenagers listening, which now constituted almost every single person in the room stared at him with their jaws dropped. Izuku could feel heat rushing to his face and he took a step back up against the wall. I it really wasn't that impressive Izuku said. Oh, don't be so humble Izuku-kun. It was awesome. Achako grinned at him and clasped his hands in her own. 
You saved my life. Izuku Khan. Did that mean he could call her by her first name too? Probably shouldn't, that would be rude. As Izuku opened his mouth to once again, tell them it was no big deal, yet another voice spoke up. If you're all done admiring Midoriya-san's achievements, put on your tracksuits and meet me in outside the man that spoke, had bloodshot, tired-looking eyes, long lanky hair that fell across his face and he wore what looked to be a black full bodysuit and an incredible length of fabric wrapped around his neck as a scarf. Who are you? Someone spoke up. The man blinked slowly, but was otherwise unfazed. I'm your homeroom teacher Aizawa Shota he said with a bored tone. He blinked again before taking out a small bottle of eye drops and dripping a few into each of his eyes. The man did look like he needed them. Now put on the tracksuits and meet me in outside with that he walked out of the room, leaving them all to wonder what the hell had just happened and who the hell that guy was. Eventually, they did what they were told and all gathered in outside where their apparent homeroom teacher was waiting for them. Are you all here? He asked, tone unchanged from before I don't care. Let's just do this. One of the other students Izuku didn't recognize decided to raise their hand and ask the question on all of their mind. What exactly are we doing here? A cork apprehension test he blinked slowly you've heard of the freedom of UA right. While that freedom extends to the teachers as well. I'm sure that you all noticed there was no introduction ceremony. Or meeting with any counselors right. Some of them nodded in response and he continued if you want to be heroes. We don't have time to waste with that kind of stuff. Now, I'm sure you all remember taking physical exams in middle school where you couldn't use your quirks right. Soft ball pitch, sit-ups, side to side, that kind of thing. This time they all nodded. Well now we're gonna do them again. Only this time you'll be able to use your quirks. Before you guys learn anything you're gonna need to learn where you are now he turned to the side before pausing and seeming to consider something oh. And before I forget, the person who gets the lowest score will be expelled. What? You can't do that. The teacher grinned. Our freedom of teaching means that we can do whatever we want. Now come on, we've got plenty to do. It was a good thing that Izuku had remembered to bring his comic pack or as it would usually be known, a backpack full of comic books, with him in preparation for the test otherwise he would have been just as good as quirkless. But which book should he take? Izuku had, of course, only brought the ones with abilities he knew how to use, so basically any choice was a good one. But which one would be best? He rummaged through the bag, thinking of the pros and cons of each choice. Perhaps it would be best to stick with something simple like Superman. Super strength or endurance would be perfect for a set of physical tests like these. With his mind made up, Izuku reached for the Superman comic. Oi! Aizawa's voice shouted from behind him Midoriya. Are you done yet or are you going to delay us any longer? Izuku quickly turned towards him and grabbed the comic. No Aizawa sensei. I'm good he rushed towards the others and settled into the group. Aizawa nodded at him. Good. Then let's get started his eyes lingered on Izuku for a moment longer before they snapped to the rest of the group. Back you go. You seem raring to go. Why don't you come up first? He held out a soft ball with a black ring around it to the agitated and fidgety teen with a scowl on his face. Kakin took the ball and Aizawa stood to the side. Now he said what was your longest throw without your quirk? Kakin thought for a moment before grunting out about 78 meters. Well then, try to do better this time. Let's see where you stand with your quirk shall we? Kakin grunted again before stepping up to the white markings on the ground and leaning back. Die! He yelled as he threw the ball, a massive explosion emanating out the back of his hand, giving his arm a clear burst of speed as well as a massive backdraft to pick up the flying ball, sending it far further than it would have usually gone. The amassed teenager's jaws dropped as the ball disappeared into the sky without a trace. Aizawa coughed to regain their attention and held up his phone. The number 750 clear on the screen. 750 meters, Bakugo. Impressive he hummed in appreciation let's see if anyone can beat that. After Kakin's incredible throw the rest of them followed suit. Some of them didn't get more than a hundred. Ida for example, whose quirk didn't really offer him anything more in terms of upper body strength. And others, who, while impressive, didn't get nearly the score that Kakin did. Apart from Achako, with her gravity-canceling ability, who achieved the high score of infinity, although Izuku wasn't sure if that was because it went out of range, or because it exited the atmosphere and the score became moot. Eventually, it was Izuku's turn. He stepped up to the mark, comic in one hand, soft ball in the other. What's with the manga? Aizawa asked, eyebrow raised. Izuku turned to him. Uh, do you know what my quirk is? His teacher nodded well. I need this to activate it. Aizawa hummed in response but didn't say anything else. Izuku scratched his cheek awkwardly and turned back to the pitch. He activated his quirk and felt the warmth flowing from the manga in his hand and filling his body. He pulled his arm back, ready to throw and hang on. Manga. Superman wasn't a manga. 
But Superman wasn't the book in his hand. In his haste to not anger his new teacher he had accidentally picked up the book beneath it. How had he not noticed the difference in thickness? What he had actually picked up was, one piece. Izuku's eyes bulged at the cover, but he didn't dare let go, with his quirk already activated. He couldn't change it to anything else until both his quirk time and his cooldown were up. And he didn't really think that Aizawa would let him take 15 minutes now that he was already up, especially because he was the last person to take the throw. Everyone else was staring at him. Izuku let out a nervous chuckle and stared at the ball in his hand, before carefully flexing his fingers around it. Yep, they extended. For the next 10 minutes, his body was officially made of rubber. What the hell could anyone do with rubber? That wouldn't help him throw a ball at all. This wasn't even the ability he'd practice from one piece, but time was running out to make his throw. Any longer and he'd just look like an idiot standing there with no idea of what to do. What could Luffy do? Izuku had read the series a hundred times. Most of it would be useless without practice. But the most fundamental of Luffy's abilities was the fact that he could stretch and the fact that that stretching eventually snapped back. But how could that help him here? He looked around him and racked his brain for anything that could possibly help. Izuku's eyes locked onto the large metal pole that made up one of the corners of the pitch he was on. An idea came to him it might just work. Concentrating for a moment and trying to feel his new flexibility. He turned towards the metal pole and threw the arm holding the ball backwards. Just as he expected, it extended behind him, ball and all, for about 20 feet before coming to a stop in midair. Izuku grunted and wrenched his arm forwards and toward the pole. It snapped back towards him and towards the pole at high speeds. He only just missed punching the pole directly. It was difficult to aim at this distance. It was also weird to bend his elbow with enough force to make it wrap around the pole about 20 times. Perfect. Izuku grinned and twisted around again. Feeling his rubberized skin rub against the pole, straining to get loose. He pulled his arm away and immediately it started spinning around in the opposite direction, picking up speed and length as the centrifugal force caused it to extend. Suddenly the last wrap came undone and his hand came rocketing towards him again. With a shout of exertion, Izuku wrenched the flying arm downwards so the ball would be thrown upwards. It rushed past him with a shockwave of air following it, billowing his hair. Finally, just before the arm reached full length and slowed down, he let go of the ball and sent it blasting into the sky. Izuku saw a faint twinkle as it disappeared. Unfortunately as he was focusing on the ball instead of his arm, he failed to notice, or prepare for, its extreme speed and subsequently punched himself in the face at approximately 180 miles per hour. How, on, earth, had he landed on his face? How did this keep happening? Was he cursed? Was that it? Was it bad karma to balance out just how incredible his quirk was? It made no sense, especially since he had punched himself in the face and flown backwards. It didn't feel like he had spun around in the air. But here he was, laying face first on the ground, with a mouthful of dirt. Izuku pushed himself up on the ground, clutching the manga with one hand and spat out the dirt. At least he was made of rubber otherwise that fist would have probably killed him. With a grunt he stood back up and took in his surroundings. Luckily for Izuku, all of his classmates were still staring up into the sky, where he had thrown the ball, with their mouths open in awe. Was it really that impressive? He wiped his mouth once more and took a look at his teacher instead. Unluckily for Izuku, Aizawa was not looking into the sky, but instead was staring at him with a raised eyebrow and a smirk on his face. Damn it. His classmates turned to look at him again, so he immediately took a nonchalant pose, hand on one hip, still holding his mang, and the other in front of his face, with a thumb on the nails to pick at the non-existent dirt and a bored look plastered across his face. He wanted to impress his classmates after all. These were going to be the greatest heroes in the future. Hopefully he made it out with them. Well, Aizawa said wasn't that an incredible display. His smirk grew a little wider. He took a look at his phone and held it up for Izuku in the class to see. 912 meters he read out. In the group of students, Katsuki Bakugu grit his teeth and started grinding them together rapidly, glaring at Izuku's annoyingly nonchalant form. How dare he stand there acting as is what he did was no big deal. That damn Deku. A growl tore itself from Katsuki's throat and his hands twitched in anger. How dare he? How dare he? How? Dare? He. He lunged through the crowd at Izuku, using small explosions from his hands to propel himself forwards at high speed. But this wasn't the Izuku he used to know. This was an Izuku with power, an Izuku that had been trained for months by an ancient dragon capable of killing gods on a whim. This Izuku reacted. Immediately Izuku ducked under Katsuki's flying form and spun around sweeping a rubbery leg out as he did in a powerful kick, the words gum gum whip ringing out in his mind as he used one of Monkey D. Luffy's normal attacks. 
but it didn't hit, and neither was Katsuki able to fire of any more explosions in order to retaliate. Aizawa's eyes glowed red as he stared at the two of them, both of their quirks caught in his vision, erasing them and making them unable to use any power as long as Aizawa kept his ability active. I won't have fighting in my class, even if it's outside he turned to Katsuki one more act like that and you'll be expelled. Do I make myself clear? Aizawa was suddenly interrupted in his speech by Izuku screaming at the top of his lungs, clutching his still extended leg that was flopped limply across five meters of ground and no longer made of rubber. T-U-R-N-I-T-B-A-C-K-T-U-R-N-I-T-B-A-C-K Izuku breathed in and out rapidly, staring at his teacher as hard as he could. For the love of God, turn off your quirk. Aizawa blinked rapidly at the scene in front of him and deactivated his eyes. The leg immediately turned back into rubber, with the time limit of use having not run out yet. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief as his limb immediately snapped back into its usual place. Aizawa coughed into his hand to regain the attention of his shocked class. That was interesting. Now, everyone, line up at the 100-meter tack for the next test he gestured at the running track before turning back to Izuku I want you to see me after class. Izuku shuddered at his teacher's tone before gulping and nodding his head in agreement. The rest of the tests went much smoother as Aizawa had allowed him to switch to the Superman comic and allowed him to go last in running which he did pretty well at, super strength wasn't just good for punching things. Although, that being said, he wasn't nearly as strong as the Man of Steel himself. Superman's powers worked by absorbing solar radiation and only being able to have the power for 10 minutes at a time Max didn't allow him much power. Although, he thought it was really lucky that the power gained from the last time he used the powers to the next. That way he'd get stronger with time as long as he continued to use it. Eventually he would be as powerful as Superman, but he wasn't there just yet. Eventually the tests ended. And after Izuku had put his comic away, Aizawa had them all group up in front of him. I'd like to say well done to everybody here they all started smiling before Aizawa spoke again. I'd like to. But unfortunately I can't as that wasn't very impressive at all he grinned you've got a long way to go just yet with that he pressed a button on his phone and a rectangular holographic display projected out of it and into the air. It was the ranking list for the physical tests. Suddenly they all remembered their teacher's little threat at the beginning of the class. Izuku quickly searched for his name on the list and breathed a sigh of relief as he noticed that it was in the number one place. Again, he hoped that people wouldn't come to expect this of him. He didn't think he'd be able to keep it up the rest of his life. At least he wasn't at the bottom of the list. That prize went to a minor reminder. Who Izuku assumed to be the aghast, pale-looking purple, haired, boy, kneeling on the ground and staring at the list. Izuku idly wondered what the boy's quirk could be. It seemed to the scent it around his hair as it was replaced by bright and large purple balls. Izuku had seen him use them earlier in the sidestep to bounce himself rapidly side to side. But that wouldn't be all it did, otherwise he would have never been able to beat the entrance exam. Although, Izuku thought looking at the list floating in front of them, that was kind of a moot point now as he was about to be expelled. Oizawa spoke up. I was lying about the expulsion thing. Their heads all snapped towards him. What? They collectively shouted. Oh I get it a girl to Izuku's left started. He remembered her name B. Momo. Yeah, Momo. It was just a trick to motivate us to do our absolute best. Hem it a hummed I am not sure I like such deceptive measures used by the esteemed teachers of UA. He paused in consideration although. I do suppose that it worked exceptionally well. Yes, I am in favor after all. Well done. He congratulated Aizawa who just stared at him blankly. re he said, before addressing the class in front of him. Everyone head back inside. And get dressed again. Your timetables will be on your desks. Classes will start again after lunch. Everyone stared at him, without moving. I don't care what you do. But if you don't go now we're gonna run out of food that got everyone moving. Izuku, remember, I wanted to see you. Soon enough, everyone left and it was only Izuku and his teacher left. Izuku couldn't help but feel a little fear. Do you know why I asked you to stay behind? The uh, Izuku thought hard is it because I punched myself in the face. Aizawa blinked in surprise. Yes, actually, at least you're smart he sighed and dragged his hand down his face in exhaustion. I wasn't lying about the expulsion. What? I wasn't lying about the expulsion. And if it wasn't for your quirk I would have expelled you today Aizawa glared at him, his quirk flashing on and off, making his eyes turn red for an instant to emphasize his point. Izuku's heart froze at the statement. He was that close to being expelled on the first day. WW what for? He managed to squeak out, his voice a lot higher in pitch than it usually was. His teacher sighed. Because you punched yourself in the face. If you did that in a fight, the villain would kill you in an instant. But I hadn't trained with that power yet. I picked up the manga by mistake. A mistake you can't make again the glare intensified. You weren't expelled today because of the incredible potential your quirk has. It might just be the most powerful quirk I've ever seen and one that's perfectly suited to hero work at that. To let you go at this point would be insanity. But you've pointed at Izuku are on thin ice, and I will be watching you from now on. 
Don't make another mistake Aizawa stared at him for a moment later before walking back into the school, leaving Izuku standing there and staring into empty space, where he remained for the next 30 minutes, thereby missing lunch, meaning he went hungry for the rest of the day, which didn't make Aizawa's ringing words any easier. Izuku rubbed his stomach in satisfaction after the massive dinner that his mother had presented that afternoon. It was in celebration for his first day at UA, which could have gone better. Not that he told his mum that, but it certainly made up for the missed lunch. Don't beat yourself up about it. How can I not de-drag? I almost got expelled he let his head drop down onto his desk in defeat. You're at the start of your journey. Do you think that Issei never failed in his journey? That was your previous user right. D-Drag was silent for a moment. Sorry, I'm nodding. But you can't see me Izuku snorted. My point is, you're just beginning. You're gonna get better, and you're gonna make it through. You've got nothing to worry about brat. I believe in you. Thanks D-Drag. Now how about testing out a new power to get your spirits up? Izuku hummed in response. Trying new abilities was always enjoyable. Alright he reached over for the new plastic bag full of manga sitting on his desk. Something he had bought the day before in preparation for UA. It was always a good idea to learn new things, especially if they were superpowers. In his customary fashion to choose a new random book, Izuku covered his eyes and reached into the bag blind. He rummaged around for a few seconds before pulling out one of the books, placing it on his desk. Ranma he read the title of the manga. Well, here we go he activated his quirk and felt the warmth flow through him, filling every limb to the brim with power. That was doing absolutely nothing. There was no change to his body, no extra limbs, he didn't feel any stronger or faster, nothing. Am Izuku hummed I wonder what power I got, maybe I should. He picked up the book on his desk and was about to start flipping through it, when his mother's voice interrupted him. Izuku, she shouted through the door have you taken your shower yet? Izuku quickly got undressed and turned the shower on. He waited for a while to make sure the water would be heated up before sticking his arm into the shower to check. Ah he recoiled his arm as freezing cold water splashed onto it. Izuku shook his hand lightly to get the droplets off it. Must be something wrong with the pipes he muttered. He wiped his arm off on his towel and picked up his sweatpants to get redressed when he caught sight of his hair in the mirror. Had it always been that long? He reached up to his shoulder where long strands of hair fell down all the way to his H his. Izuku's hand froze as she took in the sight of her very obvious breasts in the mirror. Very slowly she looked down at her body and got an eyeful of a very obviously naked teenage girl. Ugh. What happened Izuku pushed herself up from the floor, the tiles were annoying cold on her face, and rubbed her head in an attempt to get rid of the headache. D-Drake she groaned what happened? You fainted. Funnily enough, I figured that one out. I meant, why did I faint?
Okay sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed the video just leave a like. And subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready. You will be notified. Okay see you in the next video. Bye.